So previously we looked at this database of cars and their owners and we created a query to show us a list of all the cars that are due to have their MOT test done next month and then we went to Word and we did a mail merge to send the owners of these cars a reminder letter to let them know to bring their cars in to be tested but of course we want to post those letters so we need to add the addresses to the envelopes and one way to do that is to use mailing labels although the technique I'm about to show you can also be used to print the information directly onto the label if your printer is capable of doing that so I'm going to go to Word and I'm going to do a mail merge now so most of the process is the same as for creating a letter um, but the start is slightly different so instead of choosing letters we're going to choose labels so sometimes when you buy labels um, if you go for a well-known brand then you might have a product um, number on them so Avery for example is a very common brand of a label and all their label styles are numbered if you um, haven't got uh, you know, a common brand, if you've picked up uh, some unbranded labels, what you can do is you can click New Label and you can enter the dimensions of the label. So what you'll need to enter is obviously a name uh, and then you can enter things like margins, the height and the width of the label, how many labels there are going across the page and how many labels there are going down. Also the size and orientation of the sheet of labels. Um, so commonly they'll be A4 but they might not be and the, the pitch is the the difference uh, between the height of one label and the height of the next label so sometimes labels have gaps between them sometimes they don't so for example if you had a label that was 10 centimeters high and the labels had a gap of half a centimeter between them then the pitch would be 10.5 as it appears in here what I'm going to do though rather than enter those um, I'm going to just select one from a list so I'm going to go for one with a dress label in the name so I'll just go for that one but you might need to get your ruler out and measure your labels if you're doing this uh, for yourself or you might be given the dimensions in an exam in which case you could create the new label and type those in so I'm going to click OK from here on in it's pretty much the same as creating a letter with just one exception so the next thing we need to do is create the recipients uh, for the labels so we're going to use the existing list and I've put that in the same place as it was before so desktop databases prices motors and it asks me whether I want a table or a query so I'll use the same query as before so we can click on uh, edit recipient list so if I was using a table or a spreadsheet I might want to narrow down uh, the list of people that I was uh, creating these labels for but I'm just going to send one to everybody so the next thing I need to do is um, go and insert the merge fields. So in the document itself what you see is th these uh, next record indicators they indicate the layout of the labels so you can see how many labels there are going to be on the page there's going to be three across and then a number going down and we can also see how big they are and that's quite useful when um, you know adjusting the size of the font etc to make sure that the f uh, f label isn't too big the text doesn't go into the next label down for example so for this person and um, what we want on their address label is their name so in my database I've got the title uh, don't forget we need to enter um, spaces so we need to space it out just as if it was words so title for name space surname then I'm going to press the enter key now if I press the enter key one thing to watch out for is that it will create a new paragraph so you might see that there's a bit of a gap there before the next line of the address so if I put um, the next line of the address in there which will be um, the street you'll see there's a, a bit more of a gap than maybe you'd like so if you don't want that gap there and um, that's appearing because in the page layout section I've got um, some before um, spacing set in the paragraph section um, if you don't want it to use that well you obviously you could change that to zero but what you could also do is just press shift and enter so if you press shift and enter it doesn't start a new paragraph but it does move on to the next line and then the text would appear immediately um, below the uh, the previous line so I'm going to add street shift enter um, town shift enter and postcode obviously I can change um, the font the font size etc in the usual way I can also change things like the color but obviously I want it to be as contrasty as possible because lots of um, address labels are read by computers these days and sorted automatically so uh, what I'm going to do now then is uh, that's looking okay I'm just going to preview the results so when you click preview uh, a slightly strange thing happens so you only see 
one label. It, it, you don't get the, the grid layout anymore. And in fact, the next label um, you know, isn't anywhere to be seen. Um, you can move to the next uh, record and it does show you the next address, um, but it shows you uh, sort of a different document. And in fact, if you merge and finish, you also get one label per page. So this is additional step for labels, which is to click this button here that says update labels. And if you click that, you then get the grid of labels um, laid out as they would be when you print them. And hopefully when you print that out, uh, you remembering to put the labels into the printer, um, you'll, they'll match up the position. So you can go to merge and finish and either just print them directly or uh, create a new document with those labels in if you want to use them repeatedly. So I can say merge all of those and get a new document. One of the problems with labels, of course, if you're only printing three, you either waste the rest of the labels or you end up with um, a sheet of labels with the top three missing. So in practice, um, what you might want to do is then either add some blank records to the top of your um, you know, your query or your table so that it forces these down onto the labels that have actually got some labels stuck on them. I suppose if you've used maybe half of them, you could turn the sheet around and feed it through the other way. They tend to be symmetrical. Um, or you could try and do it manually by adjusting the margins. But in an exam context, uh, I don't think that they're going to be that tricky. So that's how to create uh, mail labels in a mail merge. You go to mailings and start merge create your labels, select your recipients, add the fields, and then Bob's your uncle. Don't, not forgetting to click on the update labels button to actually display them in a grid.